Welcome the Shipper family. Hello, family. Let's hear it for them. We have Megan and Luke and Hadley, and of course, Jude is here. Hey, Jude, it's good to see you. So nice of you guys to make the trip to come see us all the way from Holman today. How are things in Holman? Very good. Kids have school today? Um, no, they did not. Okay. All right. We were just talking about that. Jude rides the school bus. Yes, he does. Okay. And how does that go? He apparently really likes it. And um, what did he do? He, uh, I got a picture the other day that he was operating the, the lift for his wheelchair. Um, and they said he might have the bus driver wrapped around his finger. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? With that smile and those big brown eyes, I can see how that can happen. You love your bus driver? Yeah. Say that again. Do you love your bus driver? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, he does. And so school works out really good. Yes, it's been amazing for him. He started when he turned three last um, December. And so he um, got a couple months in, and now he is, um, has another year in the same classroom. And he has a four-year-old birthday coming up. He does in December. How, where, where does time go? I know. I don't know, Megan, because it seems like we were just talking here, and he was just a newbie, and then all of a sudden Hadley comes onto the scene, and here we are today. Yep. So let's go back. I know the Jude story really well, but there's a lot of people who don't. Are you okay with Sharon? Absolutely. Okay. Well, how'd things start? So we found out at my 21-week um, ultrasound that he was going to be born with spina bifida and missing his um, left leg. So I remember um, just being in that ultrasound, and they had me turned the other way, um, so I couldn't see the screen. And I didn't really know any better, but I think he, the ultrasound tech was looking for a long time to see, you know, where the, his leg was or, or anything like that. So we then went to meet with um, our doctor, and that's when we found out. Um, the next week was kind of a whirlwind. Um, we then came up here to Gunderson and met with some doctors and ultimately determined that he would either need to be born in Iowa City or in Rochester. Where um, were you living at that time? We lived down in Lansing, Iowa at the okay. time. Okay. Um, so that was kind of our two choices um, because there was not a pediatric neurosurgeon here in La Crosse. Okay. So ultimately we chose Rochester. Um, we had some consults up there um, and we were planning for him. Um, to be born at the beginning of January. However, as soon as we um, kind of made those plans, um, Jude had a plan of his own. And on December 2nd of 2014, my water broke and um, Jude would be born that day. So I was supposed to have him up in Rochester so that he could have surgery right away after. However, he wanted to come out s too fast. So he was born down in Iowa and then um, flown in the helicopter up to Rochester. Where were you when he was in the helicopter? Did you get to go? I actually did get to go. Okay. Um, he was born at 3.30 in the afternoon, and my doctor graciously discharged me um, at about 7 p.m. that night so that we could drive up to Rochester. Okay, so you just have a baby, and now you're in the car and driving how many hours? Um, was it about two hours? About three hours. Probably um, the longest drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I knew I wanted to be there with him, and my doctor trusted us, um, knew we would be in good hands, and that there would be people there if I needed it. So um, Jude went to surgery the, ne the next day, and so I can't imagine not being there with him. It was super important, and you know what? I think your doctor in Iowa had the heads up to know that the best place for you guys was to be here. Absolutely. Okay, so then what happened? Um, we spent about 30 days in the NICU. Um, he had two surgeries during that time, so they initially had to repair the hole in his back. Um, and then at two weeks old, they had to again close that hole in his back because it had opened up. And they also needed to place a um, shunt in his brain um, to help drain the excess fluid. So he's just a few weeks old or a few months old at this point, and I've already lost track of how many surgeries he's had. He had two in the first 30 days while we were in the NICU. He had a third at four months old, and then after that, um, we had about eight or nine surgeries in the first um, eight months of life. Eight or nine surgeries. Correct. I just, I just don't even know. 
I don't know how you guys adapted to that. Now, where are you living now? Did you when did you move to home and to this area? That summer we were in Lansing, um, and so we had to make very quick trips back to Rochester um, to get him to his neurosurgeon uh, neurosurgery team um, so that they could operate on him. And a bunch of those were shunt failures, um, and so we. Um, what happens when? when there's a shunt failure what what happens so basically um, the shunt either gets blocked or broken or um, something so that it's not draining the fluid and they describe it um, as probably one of the worst headaches that you would ever have um, so, so Jude is experiencing headaches when that happens yeah probably very extreme okay although we don't really he doesn't really complain a whole lot so Actually, when he was four months old, we did a routine MRI, and we had no idea. Um, There was a big old white blob on his MRI, and we had no idea. So he went into the hospital, went into surgery, and that's when he got the second shunt placed. Um, So it's it's pretty uncommon to have two shunts, um, and he, of course, has just proven to have a really difficult time with it. So... Um, we moved up to La Crosse when, or to Holman when he was about 16 months old. Um, and things after that summer were pretty good. Um, we had a couple of surgeries here and there. Um, and then this last spring, um, we had another um, series of shunt failures again. So, you know, it's interesting where that happened because kind of together as a group and nobody even had a clue that he wasn't feeling well because where were you? Uh, we were one of them was at when we were at the hero kickoff. Um, he was interacting with everybody. My coworker um, would comment that she, you know, had no idea. He was him happy self. Um, he really shows very minimum minimal symptoms when he has a shunt failure. Um, we can tell he's just a little bit off, a little bit more ornery, but he's also three. So, how do you determine three-year-old behavior versus? A shunt failure. It's really hard. Well, I have some good news for you. We've had nine calls that have come in already. And it's Block and Crow Power Hour. So it's a power hour on top of it with the help from Block and Crow. And I'll tell you something, already nine calls coming in. And we really haven't asked for them yet. But we're going to. 608-784-KIDS-5437. And so the story continues. Now, how? what happened this mm. spring? With the, with the shunt, what happened after that, after there was failure? You had kind of a rough couple months. Yeah, so we had, I think it was three or four um, this spring. And it seems like when Jude has a shunt failure, they come in a couple at a time. Um, this couple, his catheter that goes into his brain, um, the, the end of the, the shunt, um, it kept clogging. And at one point, our neurosurgeon said, it can't be the catheter. I just replaced it. It can't be. And we waited about another week. And then we decided we needed to investigate because we knew that there was something wrong. You knew something was going on. And sure enough, it was the catheter. (laughs) So um, he's proven to to surprise even the doctors, even the most um, experienced neurosurgeons. Um, just, it's just Jude. But amazing that you guys, as mom and dad, you pick up on some of the most subtle things, and it's kind of like you kind of know what's happening. We do, unfortunately. That's, that's happened a couple times. We've been around the block. Um, we're over, you know, I think we're between 15 and 20 surgeries. I've lost count. Um, so we're familiar. And when we go in, our, our neurosurgery team generally believes us now. <laughs> Although when we check into the ER, everybody's kind of looking at us sideways thinking, are you sure? And then as soon as he's gotten his imaging done, they say, well, you knew. You knew what was wrong. And um, so we just, we fix it. We take care of it. What's coming up? Um, Right now he um, is doing well. We had a MRI not too long ago at the beginning of the month and it was stable. So we have six months until we check it again, unless we have concerns. So that's pretty awesome. Um, He just got a new prosthetic leg. Oh, he did? 
Does, yeah. uh, do you need um, physical therapy with that? Yes. Um, we travel up to Minneapolis to get his prosthetics. So he just got his fifth um, prosthetic because kids grow and need new ones. So he's adjusting to the new one. Um, it, it has a knee in it now, so we'll be able to use it more functionally. He'll be able to wear it more. Um, and then he does, he does physical therapy twice a week um, here in the La Crosse area. And then um, we are planning to, in a couple weeks, take him up to Minneapolis um, for an extended weekend for about four days over the over a weekend um, to do some intensive therapy with um, a physical therapist that works up there that does prosthetics all the time. You guys have a lot of appointments to keep in a week. We do. Yeah. yeah. How do you work all that out? Um, I only work part time, <laughs> which is um, awesome. And Jude is my probably my full time job besides that so um, but we share appointments um, as we're able to Luke works full-time but we we rotate the therapy um, he does physical therapy twice a week um, occupational about once a week um, and then music therapy once a week how's mu music therapy go it's been really really great for him and um, that's one of the things that most recently Children's Miracle Network has helped us with he started it in the spring, and we just seen a huge increase of um, his speech development and as well as um, dealing with some of his frustrations. When he gets frustrated, um, he doesn't have a lot of words to tell us, um, and so it's been a really cool to see him identify emotions and um, be able to use some strategies to to get through those. I bet there's been about a half a dozen families this afternoon, well, or maybe this morning too, who has told us that music therapy is like one of the best gifts that they've had. Yes, it's I mean, been amazing. It's just amazing. You'd yeah. agree with that, Dad? Dad's shaking his head. Yeah, you'd agree with it. So Children's Miracle Network, they came into your life when? Um, I mean, right when he was born, I worked pretty closely with these um, wonderful ladies, and so they would just put the bug in my ear all the time. Let us know what you need. Um, let us know what we can do. And for a while, for a while, I just um, I said okay and went about it. And then I think probably oh, once we had all those shunt failures the first summer, I said okay, we you need to get it's some time to ask for some gas money um, and stuff like that. It's pretty tough to do for you guys. A little bit. Yeah. 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 But um, they they still just say, "What do you need? Let us know what you need." Um, and this year alone, we've used oh hundreds and hundreds of dollars of gas money um, getting up to Rochester. Um, I I try my best to to make appointments all together when I can. Right. Absolutely. Um, but I think the spring at one point I made three trips in a week to Rochester. So. That was not ideal, but. And that's when we were talking this morning as well, you know where every bump is, you know where the wind blows across <laughs> the road. And we were talking about the long cow barn, yep. you know exactly where that is, yep. because that's what you see when you make all those trips. Tell me about an adaptive bike. We didn't, yeah. we didn't talk about that, but I know so last that summer, you had a bike. Yeah, yeah, last summer he got a bike and that, um, I always struggle to find activities that, um, Jude can do outside and now especially with the both of the kids um, it's, it's kind of hard to take them places and you know figure out how it's going to work for Jude um, but the bike was was a normal kid thing that he could do um, he can't ride any normal bikes so um, but also at the same time he is able to pedal with both his arms and his leg so it's strengthening his muscles and he doesn't even know it so because it's just fun it's just fun so and that's one of our really our go-to um and that bike was approximately five hundred dollars we couldn't have done it well there again when it has adaptive or it's something that is made <laughs> special and it's got to be measured correctly yeah. it's not going to cost what a standard trike or bike or wagon is going to cost yeah yeah yep so that was um and his his bike is one of the smallest models there's um, they they go up from there. So 
You know, that's really exciting when we hear everything happening behind us on the Blood Center of Wisconsin phone bank. Every time we hear a celebration means that somebody else has opened up their checkbook mm -hmm. and given with their heart, putting their money where the miracles are. And you just don't know from one day to the next when help is needed. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Before Jude was born, I never would have thought, you know, I knew about Children's Miracle Network. I work really closely with, with Children's Miracle Network, and I just, you never think it's going to be you, but it could be tomorrow. Tell us about your part-time job. Um, I'm one of the child life specialists here at Gunderson, so I see families every single day that their kids are going through um, procedures and surgeries and are in the hospital, and that really benefit from this money. You know, I got to tell you something. I'm watching Hadley here. And <laughs> let her say hi. Let her have the mic there for a minute. Hi, Hadley. I have a grandbaby boy who's about your age, and I know exactly hi. what's going on with you. Hi. hi. See, she just wanted the mic for a minute. She just hi. wanted to talk. Hadley, we have 13 calls. That's right. I told your mommy to eat the microphone like an ice cream cone, and you're doing that. That's right. So we're up to 13 calls. 13. At 784 Kids, K I D S, that's 5437. You're listening to the Children's Miracle Network Radiothon on your way home, ready to start the weekend. Started off feeling good. It feels so good to give. It feels good to pick up the phone safely if you're driving. Make sure you can get to a safe place and call us just like the phones are ringing now at 784-5437-784, kids. Give us a good reason to pick up the phone and call. What would you say, Megan? Give us a good reason. Well, I was thinking about this question earlier. You um, were, and what'd you come <laughs> up with? Um, I just... It's worth it. These kids are worth it. Um, these families are worth it. You're not going to regret calling in, giving any amount that you can. Uh, every single dollar helps. It does help. It stays local. And it's helping families in our area. And, you know, and sometimes it comes in so many different forms. Mm -hmm. Today we heard of some camps that we had never heard of before. And we have done this for many years. And it amazes me. Each year there's a new need that's being met. And like, I mean, think about it. Think about the adaptive bike that you have. Like we said, mm -hmm. it was cost prohibitive for you and jumped in, helped you, and there it is. You know, and helping you with all those trips to Rochester and those trips to Rochester aren't done for you. No, they won't ever be, probably. Um, we will continue to go to Minneapolis as well um, because that's where the experts that Jude needs are. And anybody would do that for their kid. Make you tired to make all those trips? It does, yeah. Do you ever feel like it's okay to feel worn out and you just want to go lay down? <laughs> you just want to take a long nap? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes, yeah. There's been times that, you know, we get Jude everything, all the therapy he needs, all the special doctor's appointments he would need. Um, we would do anything for him. Um, but at times there's times that you think like should we cut back should we just let him be a kid um but he doesn't stop so we don't stop either and you're not gonna stop no. and uh, he's number one on the list and you will do whatever you need to do and the support system you have some family Yes, and we you do. have lots of yeah. family that helps you out. You mm -hmm. have lots of coworkers and friends. You have the Children's Miracle Network that is here to help you. And it's amazing how they just know it's time to jump in and check on you. They do. Because yeah. I've seen that happen. Yep, yep, time and, and time again. Sometimes I see that in the halls when you're walking, you know, Gunderson Health System, and I see that. Yeah. We have had an amazing visit with you guys. The phones are still going, and I think what we're going to let you do is go have a weekend. Does that sound like a good idea? Sure. All right. You guys, thank you. Thanks for making the trip. Jude, come back and see us, big guy. Jude, see you, you soon. Hi. Yeah. You want to say hi? Say hi. Hi. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're listening to the Children's Miracle Network Hospital Radiothon, a service of La Crosse Media Group. <laughs>